So following on from my last video in which I have been working on trying to repair the motor out of this MADAS mechanical calculator, um, I have gone through the steps I described. Uh, I was getting a lot of leakage on this rotor. Very strange, it was um, leaking more with one current polarity than the other. Um, so I found a method whereby I could flush it using various solvents and um, pass electrical current through it and uh, slowly managed to clear away the leakage. Now I've got no idea what was causing it. Uh, as I said, uh, if anyone's got any idea as to what may have been causing this and the chemistry behind it, then uh, I for one would be very interested to learn what that might be. Um, but as things are, I got rid of the leakage. I currently have uh, 120 volts uh, applied to this. Uh, same test I was doing previously. Uh, left it uh, for 24 hours and um, it was still fine so I've applied uh, five coats of uh, conformal coating. I've now baked it in an oven for an hour so it's uh, well and truly cured and so what I'm going to do now is a final leakage test before I reassemble the motor and then once the motor is reassembled I'll do another leakage test and make sure the motor actually still works because I don't know if this now still works. Um, I've got the same setup I had previously, so I'll just move the camera across. So I've got two uh, Ryden supplies, both set to 61 volts, and I have them in series with a current meter. One leads going to the shaft of the motor, and the other I've got some a wire wrapped around the commutator so that I'm contacting uh, all the segments so we're getting if you like worst case leakage so the leakage will not normally be this high because we'd only normally be putting current through uh, a proportion of the windings um, but at the moment it's going through everything and so what I'll do is point the camera at the current meter and then I'll turn the ride on supplies on and we'll see what the current leakage current is so before I turn the supplies on, I apologise for not uh, videoing the original very high leakage current I was getting. I was initially getting around 70 to 80 milliamps when running this test. And the reason I didn't video it was because I didn't think I was going to be able to do anything to rectify it, so I just didn't bother. It wasn't until I realised I might be able to resolve this that I started to video it. Uh, but by then I'd uh, already reduced the leakage quite a bit. So I'll now turn the ride and supplies on. So they're now on, and as you can see, we're getting a little over four microamps. Uh, whereas previously I was getting, um, as I say, up uh, in excess of 70 milliamps. So I'll turn the ride and back off, and back on again. So you can see the uh, leakage current is now very small. I'll just move the camera back down so you can see the rotor again. And just to prove that I'm not trying to con you, I'll just measure the voltage across this. And you can see we're up around 121, just under 122 volts. Okay, I'll move the camera back up to the current meter and I'll then reverse the polarity of the current so we can check it in the opposite direction. So I'm going to reverse the current. And you can see it's almost identical. There's a going to be a bit of difference simply because the leads um, dangling around the bench at these low currents are about to pick something up um, but the leakage in both directions is now pretty much the same okay so what I was doing was um, as I described in the previous video I was just immersing the rotor in various solvents putting the glass into the vacuum chamber sucking all the air out and that causes the solvents to be drawn fully into the rotor now I've got no idea what the substance is that we finally flushed out. Um, this is IPA, uh, starts clear of course. 
Um, smells really bad at the moment, so I've got no idea what this um, substance is. I suppose what we could do is uh, do the taste test and see what it tastes of. Oh dear, that tastes disgusting. Um, no, nope, still none the wiser. I've got no idea what's in there. Uh, I am of course joking. Uh, don't try and drink this stuff, it probably isn't good for you. Uh, but what I will be doing is passing this through the spectrophotometer to try and get some idea as to what might be in it. So I'll do that with both the IPA um, and the, I actually use two other solvents. Um, so I'll pass all three through the spectrophotometer and see if I can figure out what might have uh, been in here that was causing the problem. Uh, but what I'll do now is get the motor reassembled and uh, rerun the leakage test and see if the motor actually still works. Okay, so I reassembled the motor. I ran it for about an hour and a half, took it apart and remeasured the leakage on the rotor. It was still fairly low, but it had increased and I get the feeling it's going to just uh, keep increasing. So unfortunately, it's a bit of a fail. I can't really um, justify just reassembling this and leaving it. I don't want to be responsible for uh, someone getting uh, electrocuted in the future. So um, the only real option was to see if rewinding this would resolve the problem. And I think it actually would. Um, initially I thought the leakage was underneath the commutator but I started uh, unwinding some of the insulation from this and it, um, it does show the same symptoms as I was seeing from the uh, separators I took out. And uh, as I've peeled this back, it, it looks like it's kind of mylar backed tape. And I've got a feeling that's got something to do with this. Um, kind of weird uh, like metal backed tape that they've used. You can kind of possibly see um, this kind of shiny uh, surface down here that uh, it may well be that that in conjunction with whatever's uh, breaking down in this insulation is what's causing the problem. And I think that if all the windings were stripped out and the uh, rotor completely clean and get rid of all this uh, black uh, gunk, whatever it is, and then rewind it, I think that would be a, a permanent fix. Uh, I don't think there's much chance of finding a replacement for this, uh, so rewinding it is the only option. I'm just having a look at it to decide whether I'm going to rewind this myself or send it away for rewinding. Uh, it should be fairly easy to rewind, but um, it's just a very tedious and time-consuming process that I'm not quite sure I want to uh, go to the trouble with for this particular machine. I'll discuss it with the owner, see what he wants to do, but as I say, I can't really justify just leaving it like this. It um, could develop a, a dangerous fault at any time, and uh, that uh, obviously would not be good. So, um, let's say a bit of a fail, but uh, it was worth trying and um, it will be interesting to see if uh, basically rewinding this uh, will cure the problem or if the issue was indeed underneath the commutator. Uh, as it is like this with the um, insulation removed from the rear of the commutator, I'm getting about a 100 mega ohm um, resistance from the commutator to the shafts it has gone up quite a bit and I think it just keep going up as uh, more of this material is taken out um, but I think all that's going to happen if this is wrong it's just going to carry on uh, doing whatever conversion is going on here and uh, we'll just end up with a, a conductive uh, block of material that will connect mains directly to the uh, the ground of the calculator and because uh, when you start the calculator you press a big metal plunger then um, I think if at that point it connects the chassis of the machine to live mains, then uh, bad things may happen. So, uh, okay, um, hopefully in the next video in, in this series um, we'll have some uh, better news on getting this motor issue sorted out so I can get on with uh, finishing the restoration of the calculator. Not quite sure how long that will be, but um, in the meantime I'll carry on with other projects.